Coming up in this episode of What Makes a Man. What makes a man? Oh my God, that is so exactly. intense. I have a direct, a lived experience of white violence. You have to intentionally want to make your boy a man. But I learned how to be a man from the corner. In order for us to make real change as individuals and as a community, we need to challenge and look at the status quo. What is happening now? And for me, artists do that with their work every day. So I'm here today to speak to Dean Hutton, better known as Golden Dean. Dean is a genderqueer artist whose work deals with queerness, body shaming, misogyny, and race. How should I address you? when it comes to the pronouns. So I use they, them, their pronouns. They, them, their are gender neutral pronouns. They're taught to fulfill a gender role. According to some preconceptions about uh, your sex and then your sexuality, um, then you get trained and indoctrinated in how to behave in certain ways where we are learning to unlearn what has been indoctrinated into us. Homophobia is very much uh, part of, hum of European culture. It's about it's a divide and conquer. Um, it's a way of like uh, uh, keeping people separate, labeling in order to hand certain people more privileges than others, and a way to disenfranchise and dehumanize human beings. So these things that we, we learned is something that now that we are slowly and hopefully in a, in a much more rapid fashion revolutionizing our cultures. Like the way in which I grew up, white people like are like f it, really. Like white people are not good people. I have a direct, a lived experience of white violence coming from white people that that, that raised me. My father was an incredibly violent man. My father rearranged my mother's face to a point where she became unrecognizable to how she looked when she was younger. I can show you pictures of that now. So this is my mother. Her name was Madeleine Bernardo. These marks here are not wrinkles. This is not the nose that she was born with or the eyes that she was born with. My mother talks about her life as a road that's written on her face. One morning, my husband came home from his night out and I was in the kitchen making a bottle for my daughter. When he came shouting at me, he grabbed the poker that we had for the stove and he came towards me. I grabbed the poker from his hand when he pushed me and I fell to the floor. Then he kicked me in my face. I was so scared that I ran out of the kitchen, leaving my children behind. The doctors asked me if I was in a car accident. I said no. My husband kicked me in my face. I had 32 stitches. I found out the reason for my father's violence was that my grandfather was an incredibly violent man who was a church elder, very highly respected. He was also a pedophile. So I come from a family of very violent white people. My primary abusers a uh, woman because I never let any white man like close enough to me to abuse me. Mm. Ultimately, those women were also reacting out of their, the violence that they had experienced through the hands of men. Gender-based violence isn't something that is, that is simple. It's very complex and it needs to be treated as a complex thing. If you look at the disciplining system between a parent mm. and a child, mm. if a child does something and I say, go to your room, you're gonna stay there the whole day. 
or my child knows that when they say something, they get a, a lash or whatever. That is a form of disciplining, but when does it become a form no, of violence? No, it's a violence. Because back in the days, corporal punishment or being disciplined worked. But look at what we have now. We Now we have a culture of violence. You also see the way that patriarchy hurts men, but the way that patriarchy doesn't allow men to be sensitive, doesn't allow men to cry, doesn't allow men to, to hold other men. So what it also does is like it says that, like, that, that touching is sexualized. We need men that care about other men to like really teach them better ways of handling. Um, because it's like, if we say like not all men, then definitely there's men that are strong enough to confront men and say, this is my aunt. I feel extremely privileged to have shared this moment with Dean. They have a way of breaking down such complex issues with ease and simplicity. You know, when, when Dean mentioned that, um, or challenged the idea of corporal punishment or disciplining a child, uh, you know, physically, it made me realize that any form of violence, whether it's physical, verbal, um, you know, or even emotional, kind of perpetuates and instills a, a sense or a culture of violence with our children. I need to ensure that I break the cycle with Ruan, you know, and, and raise him in a, in a healthy way and positive way. Coming up after the break. And I realized that the issue was not gender, it was violence. There's a statement that says, no, they call, men don't cry. When, when a dude doesn't cry, he internalizes it, and then it's gonna come out as a slap to his kid. The voices of the survivors are very important and central in the fight against, you know, GBV uh, in our society. But if we truly want to end the cycle of violence, then it's important that we hear from all voices, including the voice of the perpetrator. And it's going to be painful and it's going to be uncomfortable to hear these voices. But if we really want to build a way forward, then we have to involve them. Ubu Jibikwa is a South African radio and TV personality who was involved in a high profile altercation. And um, I want to talk to Buji, you know, uh, not for him to to defend his actions. But I think there's something still I found from this incident. Yeah, so thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy schedule uh, to sit down with me and have this conversation. Thank and I think you. I'm going to start it just uh, the same way I started with everyone. First question is, what makes a man? Oh my God, that is so In intense. South Africa today, what makes a man? Um, what makes a man, according to South African standards, mm. it's just you having certain genitals, you know, having a penis, if yeah, I should put it that yeah, way. Yeah. Unless if you're asking to what really makes a man in terms of... In terms of qualities. In terms of qualities and, and characteristics. And characteristics. Mm. Exactly. What really makes a man is someone who's able to lead, uh, someone who's not afraid to be vulnerable. A man is someone that also protects and nurtures as well. What do you identify as? I identify as he, okay. uh, male, okay. and a gay man. When you're gay as a man, you're not regarded as, as a man. Mm. Mm. In most cases, you're regarded as female or you're regarded as just one of those things. But up until something that happens, let me say like an altercation mm. between a gay guy and probably a female, and then that's when it's like, but you're a man. You are macho. You know, you're no longer seen as Uchoma, as your Unganui too, as, you know, that gay guy. I, I want to go into the incident between you and... I am in a process of hectic healing because that incident changed my life forever. Well, I grew up from a tavern, number one. I've seen violence, violence firsthand. I've seen women beat each other up to a pulp, as if we were my daughter. You know, I've seen men fight intensely, you know, and sometimes being exposed to that, it's like you put it in your mind and then you lock it in. It becomes like a weapon. You go to one day when something bad happens to me, this is how we fight. Mm. Not knowing that when you know better, you need to do better. And funny enough, with someone like me, who has always known better for, 
for the longest time, also working with all these big organizations, I've always known better. And now I've learned that there's something that we call that your resources of knowing better do run out. Mm. Whereby you need to go back and say, okay, you've always known how to solve conflict, but you've never learned how to solve conflict, your own conflict. Your own, at this level. Oh, my understanding of gender-based violence is violence between two different genders um, where the other one has dominance over the other, right? Mm. It, wasn't, it wasn't a fight of sexuality. It, it wasn't us having an altercation because you are female and therefore I am, ma I am male. We had an altercation that I could have easily had with you. Mm. And I realized that the issue was not gender, it was violence. Mm. It was violence because chances are that would have happened even if it was a male person. So, so what, what steps have you taken? I started with counseling before therapy. And then after counseling, the lady that I was doing counseling with was like, you have deeper issues, my guy. Mm. So I went to therapy and then I did, I enrolled myself through different activities that the government is, is doing of helping men deal with violence. Mm. And also this is the Department of Justice. But do you think the steps that you have taken are enough compared to damage done. Violence is a big thing, guys, in South Africa, and and, I, and, and I'm so sorry for contributing to it. I, I, would, I would really like to, this is me taking ownership of that incident, saying, that was wrong of me. That's what I'm saying. It's either you can look at my situation and think of turning it into a joke or saying whatever, or you can either learn from it. I am learning from it, and I'm willing to teach everyone. It's not as simple as just saying sorry and moving on, you know? Bougie knows that he, his actions are something he's gonna have to live with for the rest of his life. He knows that he's gonna have to unlearn problematic and toxic behaviors, take responsibility and be accountable for his actions. On this journey, everyone I've bumped into or I've, I've spoken to from the one person to the next, they all highlight how they come from violence, you know, or an environment of violence. But this can't be you know, the only cause or justification. You look, it's clear that violence is problematic and exists, but it's also clear that it's not a, a solution. It doesn't solve anything. Look, man, this was like an uncomfortable, painful and difficult conversation for me. But if we want change, no one will look towards change, then these conversations need to happen. It's crazy. I'm about to see my camera perform for the first time in front of his own people. These are people that grew up with him. These are people that know him. It's the core of Maclera. Maclera dope boy. It doesn't get more exciting than this. Maclera's music depicts the love he has for the township of Kanan, but also tells the violence experienced in this environment. Finish him. Villain with the syllables, flawless victory. Finish him. Reinvolved. I'm the emperor, imperialism with the cynicism. Young Akuma with the pace hit. Colonel Gail, Sunny Boom, him by Slash Blanca. Kataza Toti, take him to the tomb. Manji is the Kanana, a Northwest. The pipe, the good one, a Kanana is the promised land. I'm going to meet up with Uma Clara Topoi. Uh, someone who's been engrossed in the culture. I want to understand them, understand their mentality and how they grew up within the culture of violence in a mining town. Hey, Buaga! Yeah. So I'm currently on a journey, you know? For sure. Um, to unpack, you know, what it means to be a man in this day and age. For sure. You know what I mean? I'm a new father. For sure. That's and I'm hoping, thank you, dog. Thank you, appreciate it, man. And I'm hoping that, like, you know, I can raise him to be a decent man, mm. or at least I can part something, mm. you know, from the way I, I grew up, mm. that that's valuable for him. But I want to know from your view, what makes a man in this day and age? For me, in this day and age, the most important one, I'm learning a lot of some customs that are very old. You know, tell me about your father, man. Was your father present in your uh, growing up? I, I won't lie, it was touch and go, eh? But like in a good way. And when I say in a good way, I mean in an understanding way. I was a kid who understood too much from a young age. When I was a kid, I saw a lot of traumatic things. If we take a kid from suburbia, not even black or white, just a kid from suburbia, maybe domestically they could see a lot of trauma, right? But in the township, 
a kid could walk to the shop, see a panga, see someone smoke crystal meth, goof, zolo, um, any of these drugs, well, in the space of 15 minutes. We are byproducts of this, you know, and we say it shamelessly, I'm proudly your hood. I'm not proud of coming from the hood. I'm not proud of the township, but I am proudly a product of the township, meaning... Why aren't you proud of the township? Because we were never supposed to be proud of township. Um, there is a lot of violence in street culture. A lot of violence in street culture, because we're talking about damaged people. The original rules of street culture, if we're going to talk about, like, gang culture, specifically in SA, there is no part that says disrespect to women. It's actually the other way around, you know? My friends, Mokasi Babisa Mashirabona, Queen, Queen of London. Things like that, I said, you understand, it's subjective. The people who want to be violent. You know, I know people who were criminals in the craziest of ways, but when they got to the house, they were the best of fathers. Do you know the first generation of black men who were raped? No, I don't. First generation of black men who were raped were raped in the mines, when white people were taking our grandfathers and our uncles and breaking their backs. That, that, that practice of power, and, and it's just a byproduct of when that happened to do. So I, I, I was having a conversation with one of my friends who's a shaman, like a sangoma, and he said to me, some stuff did not exist in African culture, so we didn't have names for it. Mm. Or certain people had never yeah. seen it, you know? Yeah. So some of those things, you must think about them like that. Like, where did dudes see this to do that to each other? I mean, dog, westernization changed a lot of stuff. Westernization changed the sexual habits and the respect of the body of a woman for men. African women could walk naked without dudes being like, oh, because that's your wife, I must respect that. Yeah. Until about now, dudes cannot handle seeing uh, just uh, the breast of a woman, you understand? You know, there's some stuff that, um, and I'm tearing up because I don't want to think about this shit. but there is some stuff that I went through in the hood, you know, violent stuff, and stuff that should never happen to a kid. There's a statement that says, you know, men don't cry. And that's cap, dog. I hate that one. I hate that one the most because, dog, you see dudes cry, dog. You see dudes cry and dudes... When, when a dude doesn't cry, he internalizes it and then it's gonna come out as a slap to his kid. You know, but I mean, like, abusive people, really abusive people are just abusive. You know, it's a power thing for them because they never want to feel weak. Something that happened at home, you know, that one I can't speak on directly, but um, when this dude tried taking advantage of my mother and I went to school in town, and everyone was saying speeches about home and, 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 my, and my speech was, I'm 12 years old, someone just tried raping my mother. Mm. Uh, someone has tried molesting me too as a kid in the township because dudes always try to take advantage of children. You know, we used to swim by the river. I know people who have been raped, you know, men who've been raped and they've never spoken about it, you know. And some of them didn't even become like rapists or killers. They just internalized it. It definitely made me hate men who don't know how to speak to women or feel like they have a certain hold over women, you know? You have to intentionally want to make your boy a man, you know? Don't make him tough. Tough doesn't mean man. That is a physical attribute. Dude. Mentally, we need to deal with these boys mentally, you know? My calmness comes from being raised around women at my house, but I learned how to be a man from the corner. You know, I learned how to be a man from my big brother. I learned how to be a man from community. I was raised by a village of uncles who taught me how to be a man. Do you think that statement still exists, that a, that a child was raised by the community? Because Yes. Because the community can't now come and say, we are proud of this person, but this person is a rapist, a murderer, so... But, they, but yeah, a, a kid is definitely raised by a community, though, because a kid like me could have been an angry kid without community. Cease! I learned to be a man from the community. When Maclera said that, it resonated with me. Because many of us were raised and exposed to violence in our community. But in spite of all of that, it's the very same community that produces men like Maclera. Men who learn that it's okay to cry. So, it's possible. If we come together to be better, to allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to cry and grow in safe spaces, and break the cycle of pain, trauma and violence, it's possible. One question, what makes a man? This has led me on a journey of reflection, painful stories, and uncomfortable truths. But what's become clear is that we are only just scratching the surface here. And I have more questions now than I did at the start. I hope from this experience, Luanle, that I can walk a path that opens a world for you, where you feel safe and able to grow into a person that lives on the basis of self-love and respect for others. 
There are no easy answers when looking to define what makes a man. And how this ties into gender-based violence. <laughs> it's not a simple answer. It's not black and white. But what is clear for me, and Maglera said it perfectly, is that we need to start unlearning a lot of problematic attitudes and behaviors. And I recognize this in myself. I regret some of the things I've said and done in the past. But I can't change the past. I can only move forward. And I can only try to find the courage to change for the better. If men were allowed to cry or show their emotions instead of acting them out on themselves and others, then, then we can rebuild a community, a society together. You know, a community that embraces and protects and loves each other. We need a reset. And this, this is just the beginning. <laughs>